What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you tips, tricks, and loadout suggestions for solo flawlessing the Pit of Heresy dungeon. Pit is the weekly featured dungeon this week, and it has truly never been easier to beat by yourself. I wanted to make this guide because Season of the Wish is the longest season we've ever had, and the artifact is perfect for easily solo flawlessing any dungeon. We have Solo Operative, which is a flat 15% buff to all your damage, and on top of that, Revitalizing Blast gives you a 15% weaken debuff on any boss, and Becoming Radiant is easier than ever this season with the Flint Striker Artifact mod. So this means you can easily deal an additional 25% weapon damage. Combine all these together, and it has literally never been easier to solo flawless this dungeon. My solo flawless run on my hunter is up on my channel now if you want to see a full run through and how I do things, but in this video I will give you advice for every encounter on every character as I beat the dungeon on every character. So I will give the top loadout suggestions for each class. I will not be going over mechanics in depth as I assume if you are attempting solo flawless you know the mechanics, but I do give advice on how to do them quickly and efficiently. And lastly, all loadout suggestions will be solar because it is easily the best thing to use this season. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The opening encounter sees you grab a sword, and then you have to go to the three symbols and take out the knight, shrieker, and wizard. You can sword skate with the sword, but you will use ammo in doing so. You can usually take out at least two of the bosses with one sword, and then you have to find another sword from the sword bearers either on the bridge or back in the room where you got your first sword. On Warlock, I went with the Sunbracers build with Izanagi's Burden, on Hunter I used the Phidias Bathe with a Kinetic Shotgun, and on Titan I used Xenophage and a Kinetic Shotgun with Syntheseps. The background gameplay shows me beating it on my Warlock and how you can get around quickly and easily with the Sword and Icarus Dash. Moving on to the maze, here's a map of where to go, but if you follow my route on screen, you can get it done very quickly. I start on the left side, and then do the middle, and then do the right. Assassin's Cowl on Hunter works really nice here, as you can go invisible, or you can just use Void Hunter for this part. There's no shame in it. I definitely crutched invis the first time I soloed this dungeon way back in the day. You can also use a Void subclass on Warlock and Titan, and use the fragment Echo of Obscurity. This will make you invis when you perform a finisher. So once you're out of the maze, you have the Chamber of Suffering. This encounter used to be extremely difficult and felt like a test of endurance. But thanks to damage resistance from 100 resilience and restoration on solar, this encounter is now child's play. On my Warlock, I used the Avalanche Machine Gun and Sunbracers with Ember of Empyrean to extend restoration on solar defeats. You can see this works extremely well. In order to get restoration going, you have to use Phoenix Dive and Heat Rises, but if you don't want to go with this strategy, you could use something like Mantle of Battle Harmony and just get solar weapon kills while using a Restoration Grenade with Touch of Flame which will give you Restoration times 2. And then just make sure you have Ember of Empyrean to extend your Restoration. 
On Titan, I used the Bonk build in Xenophage, which is great for taking out the knights that spawn in up top. And on Hunter, I also use Xenophage. The big key here is having Restoration and Ember of Empyrean. Crutch that and you'll be fine. And once again, if you're on a Hunter, you could use Assassin's Cowl. You could use the Arc setup with Combination Blow, but Throwing Knives also work nicely with Assassin's Cowl. In this encounter, every time you dunk a ball, two of the knights will spawn up top. Take them out as they can hurt quite a bit. You can also leave the big knight that spawns in the middle and only focus on taking out the left and right knights as the middle one sometimes takes a while to get back and you can't be off the middle plate for too long. This encounter is really just a relay. You kill the big knight, grab the ball, touch the plate to reset it, dunk the ball, take out the adds in the knights, rinse, repeat. Just keep an eye on your resto timer which I know is a lot easier said than done thanks to the shitty UI and how hard it is to see all your buffs and debuffs. But don't be afraid to drop the orb and get some solar kills before you dunk just to ensure that you have restoration up at all times. The Well of Radiance super is really good here in a panic, as is Hammer Titan. But just get into a rhythm and this encounter should be no problem at all. Once this encounter is complete, you have to jump down and avoid all the spikes. Just be careful here and utilize the edges if you have to. Take your time. Then we have this section, where I have never actually learnt the route. I usually just go to the right and work my way around. If the Shrieker is there on the right, that means a wizard is nearby. Anyways, work your way through this part and kill the three wizards and you'll be on your way. Just keep an eye for a red on your radar to know where to go. Again, Xenophage does wonders here. Use the jump that you're most comfortable with and take your time. Swapping to Strand here is also not a bad idea as you can use grapple melees to get out of trouble. And a sword could be beneficial too. But be careful with eager edge swords as it may hurt you more than help you depending on how used to them you are. From here we have the final boss. Now, I have taken the liberty of testing a ton of different damage options so that you don't have to. Argent Ordnance adds 15% damage to your rocket launcher, so that could be nice if you want to use a rocket, but just don't blow yourself up. I actually one phase with my hunter using Celestial Nighthawk and then swapping to Foe Tracer. I used Dragon's Breath and a Vorpal Cartesian Coordinate with Triple Solar Surge. But just make sure you are matching surges to your heavy weapon and you will be fine. And don't push damage too long when the boss takes a knee. If you don't get a 1 phase, then it will be a very comfortable 2 phase, and there is nothing wrong with that. You have come this far, now just play your life. If it takes an extra damage phase, it's really not a big deal. During damage, partway through, the Cursed Thrall will spawn. Take them out before continuing damage. It is worth losing the DPS so that you don't die. I also want to talk about getting to DPS. If you do things right, you will only have to use one sword to take out the Wizard, Shrieker, and Knight. You start with the Shrieker. This will build up Sword Super. Then you go to the Wizard and use the Super and the Heavy Swings. Then you head to the knight and use the super again when it is available. If you set the sword down, then you lose your super charge. So try to stay holding it as much as you can, or only drop it after you use your super. Additionally, you can kill all the adds surrounding the mini bosses first if you like. This will ensure that you don't die. It adds time, but it is far more safe. I don't kill them because I know how to avoid them, and then during boss DPS, the adds either despawn or they don't bother you. 
Also, you can dunk all the orbs at the end. So I like to dunk two orbs and then clean up all the adds that spawn. You don't want any adds alive for when you are dealing damage. The Swordbearer Knights will respawn after a little bit, so leave one up with a bit of health and then kill it right before you dunk your last ball. Additionally, I recommend loadout swapping right before damage. What this allows is for you to store armor charge. Then you can swap to triple solar surge on your boots for max DPS. Make sure your DPS loadout has time dilation mods so that your surge lasts through the whole damage phase. Argent Ordnance will use these up however, so unless you know how to get around that, don't even bother with Argent Ordnance. That is a bit more of an advanced strategy. My recommendation would be Wither Horde for its utility and a god roll rocket. The Crux Termination is a world drop that can roll with awesome rolls. Obviously Apex Predator with bait and switch is amazing, but if you don't have that, try and get a different good rocket. Rockets are nice as they give big chunk damage so that you can move around and avoid the fire from the boss. Precision weapons like Izanagi's Burden or Linear Fusion Rifles are much harder to use on this boss. So one thing that needs to be noted with a lot of the damage testing that I was doing is it wasn't even fully optimized. On a lot of the tests before damage phase, all I was doing was swapping to Apotheosis Veil. But if you wanted to be fully optimized for your solo flawless run, you would have preset loadouts in your loadout selection tab. This would allow you to bank armor charges while you're killing the Night Wizard and Shrieker, and then right before damage you swap to your DPS so that you have full armor charges with long time dilations. So again, in some of the background footage like the Leviathan's Breath, I didn't even have triple void surge. There are numerous clips where I'm not getting that 22% extra damage from the various surges. And when I do one phase with Dragon's Breath, for half of those I didn't even have solar surge because I was using Argent Ordnance so it was using up my armor charge. But what would be optimal would be to have 6 armor charges going into damage phase so that you're getting the triple solar surge and the Argent Ordnance buff for the entire duration of the boss fight. So a lot of the DPS phases that you're seeing weren't 100% optimized. I just wanted to show off a variety of different DPS strategies that you could use so that you can select the one that you feel most comfortable with. If this is your first solo flawless attempt at any dungeon, then I definitely recommend soloing at first so that you can play around with the strategies that you like and get a little bit comfortable. Then when you have a strategy that works the best for you, you can optimize your loadout and your pre-selects, and then you can have optimized damage strategies. Anyways, that was just a bit of a disclaimer that I wanted to throw in here. On my Titan, I use the Lament and nearly one phased. The Lament heals you as you deal damage, so this is a great strat. At the start of your damage phase, hot swap to Pyrogales for a heavy hitting one off super and then just go to town with the sword. This is a very safe strategy. I tried Grand Overture on my Warlock and it was very good but it is quite annoying to use and you have to make sure that you stack up your 20 missiles before starting DPS. Anarchy and a fusion rifle could be really good here but a lot of players don't have Anarchy. For Warlock only, you could use Legend of Acrius. I recommend only on a Warlock because you have to be right in the boss's face so Well of Radiance will help you survive. This with Sunbracers would have easily gotten me a one phase but I purposely wiped so that I could do more damage testing. I used Apotheosis Veil vale and Parasite and could have one phased as well. Just watch out for the explosion damage from the worm as it can easily kill you. Celestial Nighthawk on Hunter does amazing burst DPS or Star Eater Scales Blade Barrage would also be good. Leviathan's Breath will get you a comfortable two phase so long as you can hit your shots. But again, this one requires precision, so it's not ideal. Xenophage and Effusion did shockingly good damage, and on a Titan with Actium War Rig, it would likely one phase. Sleeper Simulant would be a comfortable two phase here as well. And Dragon's Breath with a Cartesian Coordinate with Vorpal Weapon and Apotheosis Veil one phased him before he could even take a knee. And Dragon's Breath is available to anyone with Season of the Wish, and Cartesian Coordinate is often sold by Banshee. So this is a great DPS setup, but it does require some loadout switching before damage to get the most out of. All that is to say, there are a ton of really good options to use on this boss, so use what you are most comfortable with. As I said, even with subpar damage strategies, you can get a comfortable two-phase thanks to how strong the artifact is this season. So go out there and get that solo flawless emblem. Pit of Heresy was the first dungeon I ever solo flawless, and it is a great beginner dungeon to dip your toes into doing solo flawless content. Remember, we all start somewhere, so definitely give this dungeon a shot. I hope this guide helped you, and if it did, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Good luck soloing Pit of Heresy, and take care.